terror, which was meant to reduce terrorism around the world. Figures compiled by your own State Department every year since 2001 show that the incidence of terrorist attacks is actually on the increase. Even just going back to 2004, there were 3,000 attacks, 2005, 11,000, 2006, 14,000. Don't these results indicate that broadly the policies you're pursuing in the war on terror are failing? I think what this shows is that we're actually pursuing them for the first time, and they're fighting back. We were sitting innocently on a day in September, a beautiful Tuesday morning. Uh, innocent Australians were sitting uh, in uh, a tourist spot in Bali. Innocent Brits were sitting in London at a, a railway station, and they were attacked. And so now we're fighting back. And so, yes, the terrorists are fighting back, too. It must be alarming that it's trending in the no, wrong direction. No, what would have been alarming is if we had allowed this to remain under the surface, if we had not taken on these networks, if we had not taken on people who, yes, will uh, use an attack to kill uh, innocents. But if the alternative is to simply withdraw from the playing field, uh, that isn't going to work. And the fact is that we're not just fighting them uh, militarily. We are fighting them for the hearts and minds of the people as well. Um, as I mentioned, I was just in An Anbar. We've won the hearts and minds of people in Anbar because they've seen the ugly face of Al-Qaeda. They know what Al-Qaeda means. If you think Al-Qaeda won't fight back, they will. But these are people who are now experiencing economic reconstruction and development, who are uh, asking for schools for their children. The United States uh, has spent $14 billion on reconstruction in Afghanistan. And if you look at what we've done in places uh, where human need has uh, manifested itself, the work that Australia and the United States did together in the tsunami, that won a lot of hearts and minds in Indonesia, one of the largest Muslim populations in the world. If you look at the work uh, that we have done together uh, in, in the earthquake in Pakistan, that is winning the hearts and minds of Muslim populations. So no, it's not just a military issue. It is about providing hope and opportunity and just as Australia has been a very good ally on the military side, Australia has been a very good uh, ally also on winning hearts and minds. But so far, despite those efforts, it's not translating into results. We're seeing the, the opposite effect. We're seeing more terrorist attacks, not less. When will we see less? We are in the middle now, maybe even at the beginning, of a generational struggle against this ideology of hatred that is so virulent that people send their children in suicide vests to, to blow up other children. Now, something is wrong in that circumstance. What must we do? We must defeat those who are irreconcilable, the Al-Qaeda's, those fighters. We must provide hope and opportunity through economic reconstruction and helping people to make their lives better. But ultimately, and this is something that I think Prime Minister Howard has understood so well, we also have to recognize that the ultimate hope comes through democracy. It comes through the same liberties that you and I enjoy. Why should we think that the people of the Middle East, the people of Afghanistan, the people of Iraq want any less than we want? to be able to choose those who will govern them, to educate their boys and their girls, to worship freely. These are basic human values. And to the degree that we uh, stand together for those liberties, for those that do not yet have them, we're also winning in the war on terror. But it's a historic struggle that we're in, and it will take time. We're hearing reports that the U.S. has drawn up attack plans for Iran, and the President